All right, let's get started. We have a video here on an introduction to a new type of variable, global variables. So far, we have been using variables in our objects. For example, player create. I've given them life and money. These were called instance variables because they belong to an instance of a player object. So every single player object I plunk in my game gets these variables. The new type of variable, global, doesn't belong to an instance or to an object. It basically belongs to the entire game. What this means is, well, you'll see what it means in terms of the player, is if the player is gone, these variables are gone. Or if you make a new player, these variables get remade new. With a global variable, once it's made, it's sort of there forever until the game ends. Here's the problem with instance variables some of the time. So you'll see here I have life and money. I've made a three room little sample program for us and you'll see here the player will get hurt touching the fire and they'll get some money picking up the diamonds. When they touch the door they're gonna hop to room two and then when they touch the door again they're gonna hop to room three. We have a little draw object drawing out the life and the money. Okay, let's see what this does using just our instance variables. So you'll see here, I'll go change my life, pick up some money, touch the door, and notice what happened. Okay, money's back to zero, life is back up to a thousand. What's happened here is when I've entered the second room, Game Maker basically remakes a player, remakes the diamonds, remakes the door, it's as if it's a fresh room and it's a whole fresh start. Since you've created a new player for this room, the create event of the player says to give that player life a thousand, money zero. And so the variables for this new object are of course back to their starting values, what you set in the create method. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you, this is one fix for this problem, is we're going to use the global variables. So here's how we get the globals working. Very easy. I'm going to make a new object, and its sole purpose is going to be, I'm going to call it object global. Its sole purpose is going to be to make these global variables at the start of the game. So in the create event, I'll make global.life and global dot money. So you probably realize here to make a global variable, use the word global. Okay, once you do this, that's the name of the variable. Anytime you want to set it, change it, or check it, you have to type the word global dot life. Obviously, you cannot have another variable called global dot life because that would be the exact same variable. And so when you do make them, you got to make sure you keep the names unique. Now, if I've changed it to global.life, I have to go back to my player. And let's do it when he touches a diamond. Money is money. Now it's global.money. Global.money. When I touch fire, I got to change that to global.life and global.life. I'm trying to think where else here. Another place I have to go is the draw object because I was drawing out the variables. One nice thing here is I had said draw money out with player. I actually don't have to do the with player anymore because those variables don't belong to the player. Now I know in your head that you know they belong to the player, but in terms of the program, these are no longer variables that are part of player objects. Okay, they're just game variables, global variables now. So you can just do that. Now I think that's it. I'll hit play. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Something you probably forget to do too. I have to go to my room. And 
of course, add the global object to the game. There we go. I'm only going to put it in the first room. It doesn't have to be in the second room or the third room. Once it makes those global variables, they're made. Okay, let's go. A little bit of fire damage. Pick up some money. And there we go. The variables just keep adding up and going well as they change. And there you go. So that's one use of global variables. <clears throat> In the next video, I'm going to show you a second use of global variables. Thanks for watching.